So, how do we get our Venus flytraps through dormancy successfully? Well, let's find out. All right, so the first thing we should cover is the temperature. Now, this is kind of a personal question that I've received because, uh, as you can see, we have this space heater running over here inside of this, well, basically plastic greenhouse inside my garage. And some people say, well, why are you running the heat? That's crazy. Shouldn't these Venus flytraps be in a cold dormancy? Uh, but what I've said on multiple occasions is that we keep it between... Uh, I'd say 25 degrees Fahrenheit and 35 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what I would consider an optimal dormancy because it's cold enough for the plants to be dormant, but it's not cold enough to cause frost damage on your plants. So, even though I have this space heater running over in the corner of this plastic tent, that turns off once the temperature in here, like at maximum, hits 40 degrees because sometimes there's warmer days. But these plants will not be hot like in a tropical warm greenhouse heating up to 80 degrees. Like I said, that heater is only a preventative measure to prevent it from going below 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that's pretty common in temperate greenhouses. A lot of people have a heating system and they keep it cold, but above freezing. So that's the whole idea with this heat. We're not heating them up. We're just keeping them above freezing so that there's no damage. And the reason for that is because... You know, in South Carolina, they're not really going to get negative 25, negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit like we can get here sometimes up north in Chicago. Um, that does more damage to the plants. They can survive it, but it's just not necessary. So, you know, once again, 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit is a really nice optimal, um, or you know what, let's go 25 to 35 degrees Fahrenheit is a really nice optimal range for dormancy. If you can keep them around 35 all winter long, they'll be dormant and they'll grow better next year. Okay, so the next question is watering. A lot of people kind of have misconceptions about watering Venus fly traps during the winter time because, you know, some people will say, oh, keep them in water, and they think, oh, keep them in water all year long. Or other people will say, oh, you need to let them dry out uh, for the winter time. And some people interpret that as, oh, they need to be completely dry, no moisture in the soil. Uh, so let's take a look at my collection here and kind of talk about how, uh, how much you need to water these plants during dormancy. All right, so the next topic is how much to water Venus flytraps during their dormancy period. Pretty much just be reasonable with it. Uh, as you can see, uh, they're not really standing in any water, and I actually don't stand them in water uh, during the majority of the year. Uh, they don't need to be growing in swamp-like conditions. They're not from swamps. They're from pine savannas down in South Carolina, where the soil is more moist, but they don't need to be sitting in water. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, you do need to reduce the amount of water during the winter time, and that's because they're not actively growing, so the leaves aren't taking up as much water, they're not transpiring, uh, and also since it's cold, the soil isn't drying out as much because there's no heat or sunlight to really dry it out. So, you want to be reasonable with this. So, it, you know, water them like normal, like if I were to come and water this, if the top was dry... You know, I pour water all over the pot and let the water run out the bottom as usual. So the top of the soil can dry out. And for a lot of these, I do start letting the top surface of the soil get pretty dry. Uh, these were watered recently, so there really isn't a great example of that. Uh, but basically, maybe this is a good one. You let that, you know, sphagnum dry out a little bit, get a little bit light in color. But if you stick your finger kind of down to the first knuckle, uh, you should still feel some moisture down in the sphagnum moss or the peat moss. So the best way I can describe it is if you had a sponge and you put in a bucket of water and you took the sponge out, let it drain a little bit, squeeze it a little bit, um, then you have a moist sponge. So if you kind of can picture the amount of moisture that would be in a sponge you squeezed out, that's kind of the level of moisture you want in the sphagnum. It doesn't need to be soaking wet. Uh, this one was watered recently, uh, but it's a good example. Like It doesn't need to be soaking wet. It just kind of needs to be moist to the touch once you put your fingers down in there. So don't let it sit in a pool of water 
but don't let them dry out completely. Just keep it reasonably moist, a nice even level of moisture uh, throughout the winter time and your plants should be fine. So the next question is the amount of light. How much sunlight or artificial light do Venus flytraps need during dormancy? So this is actually kind of a little bit of a complicated question. Uh, number one, they don't need any light during dormancy, but this is, you know, with the stipulation that they are in a very cold climate, like, you know, for me, they've been around 30 degrees Fahrenheit uh, out here in the garage. Uh, and in that, you know, cold temperature, they're not growing and they don't really photosynthesize. They're not growing new leaves. So I've had my Venus fly traps uh, in complete darkness uh, for the past two months. Now, as you might have seen from the previous clip, a lot of them still have red coloration on them. So how is that possible if there's no light? Well, during a true dormancy, your plant isn't growing at all. It's sort of in a state of suspended animation. So all of these colors that my Venus flytraps have attained in the fall when I was still running artificial lights, uh, they developed that coloration uh, around, you know, October, and they've stayed like that ever since. They haven't produced any new growth. These are all old leaves, like I said, just in a state of suspended animation. So if it's cold enough, you can keep them in pure blackness, like in a refrigerator, they don't need any light. If they're in a cold garage, like they are for me, you don't need any light. Now, that being said, uh, can you still run lights over your Venus flytraps during the winter time? Uh, sure, why not? I'm not paying your electrical bill. But uh, at the same time, uh, like I said, they're not going to use too much of that light, but some people still say, oh, well, even if it's like, you know, 10% usage, that's still kind of a little bit of a boost uh, for my Venus flytrap. So sure, you can use it. Uh, I've been running those YesCom panels. Uh, those are kind of a cheap $20 option. I've been looking to get a Viper Spectra, which is around $60. It's a better grow light. Uh, also, shop lights seem to work decently well. Um, but my personal experience, in the coldest part of the winter, I don't turn on the light at all. They're perfectly fine like that. Uh, and once it starts warming up kind of past 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I will give them a head start on the growing season in early March and April before it's warm enough to put them outside here in Chicago. So kind of up to you uh, in terms of light, but in my opinion, it's not necessary if it's cold. From, you know, my experience, what I've seen with my plants, they're perfectly fine in pure darkness if it's cold enough. Okay, so now we're going to get into some of the issues people experience because they don't give their Venus flytraps proper dormancy. So, uh, a lot of people grow their Venus flytraps indoors because they like their plant, they want it to be, you know, seen, uh, they want to observe it every day, but inside of a house your Venus flytrap is not going to go dormant. Now, a lot of people tell you, well, you reduce the number of uh, sunlight hours and you, or you reduce the number of light, the amount of light they're getting, uh, and they're going to go dormant. But that's false. So if the temperature in your house, you know, let's say even if it's 60 degrees, they're not going to be going dormant. I feel like most people will keep their house at at least 70 degrees. And in that temperature, they're definitely not going to go dormant. It doesn't matter how much you reduce the light. It doesn't matter if it's intense light, but on a short photo period, uh, that's not dormancy. I've experienced it for many years when I was experimenting with how to grow these indoors. Uh, it just didn't work. They really need cold temperature. So either some kind of garage setup like I have here, a greenhouse, or put them in your refrigerator for the winter. They really need the cold dormancy. Otherwise, they're going to start growing. And so now I'm going to show a couple examples of plants that aren't dormant, but they are in fact dying uh, due to the warm temperatures and not receiving enough sunlight. All right, so now let's talk about what a Venus flytrap looks like during dormancy. So I guess that is a good example here. Uh, this is what they look like during dormancy. If it doesn't look like this, there's something wrong uh, with your plant. Now, a lot of people have different opinions on this. Uh, so I printed out uh, some pictures as examples of misconceptions. Uh, so if one of these are yours, congratulations, uh, no offense, but I'm using it as a tool uh, to show people how not to grow your Venus flytrap. So 
What is the main difference between these plants and my plants? Well, my plants have been under lights uh, until late November. Um, and then once it was cold enough around, let's say 30 degrees Fahrenheit on average, I shut them off and they've been sitting in the cold and they've been, you know, they reduced their growth. They still have nice coloration from the amount of light they were receiving, but now they're completely dormant in the state of suspended animation. Uh, and again, I just turned these lights on, uh, for the video so you can see what's going on. Uh, but they haven't received any light. Now, these plants, they're not going dormant, but people say, oh, well, they're going to look bad during dormancy. And I mean, you know, they do look kind of crappy because they're not in full growth, but they should still look, you know, lively and healthy when you look at the traps and the leaves. Uh, what's going on with these is that they're dying. So inside of your house, if it's 60 degrees, I know some people might keep it up to 70 degrees and some people even warmer than that. Uh, but even if it's, you know, as cold as 60 degrees, let's say, in someone's house, that's still not cold enough to make your Venus flytrap go dormant. It's still going to be wanting to continue to grow as if it's the growing season, if it's 60 degrees or above in your house. Uh, and most people's houses, doesn't matter which windowsill they put it on, because they say, oh, maybe the southern facing windowsill is better, or they buy some, like, cheap, you know, light, random light bulb from the hardware store. They don't even know how strong it is. Um, in most situations, you're not going to be giving your plant enough light inside your house, so it's going to start looking like this. So what is this? So basically, this is an example of a light-starved plant, or what's known as edulation, where the leaves grow really, really long because the plant is still in active growth. It hasn't slowed down for the winter, but there isn't any sunlight available. So it grows really, really thin leaves. They're really, you know, spindly and kind of dangly. The traps are really small. They're non-functional. They might start dying off. And this is a sign that your plant is not dormant. It's still growing, but it's not receiving enough light. All right, so here are the next two examples are kind of similar. So basically, uh, you kind of have the same situation. Venus flytraps, they sometimes do something a little bit different. So instead of growing really, really long leaves, uh, they'll be a little bit wider, but they're still floppy. The traps are small uh, or, you know, non-existent on this one. There's no new growth in the center and even, even have a flower stalk growing up. And so the commonality between all of these is all of these plants were inside. And like I said, indoors, if it's like 60 degrees or above, that's way too warm. They're not going to be dormant. They're going to continue to grow. And in most cases, you're not going to be providing enough light. And they're going to start, you know, getting leaves that aren't receiving enough photosynthesis. The plant is going to start dying. All three are examples of plants that have started to die. So, like I said, if you want good dormancy... You got to keep them around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, like I said, they don't really need sunlight or any kind of artificial light. If it's cold, if you put them in your refrigerator, they don't need light. But they must have cold temperatures. If you're growing them inside of your house where it's 60 degrees or above, you're going to have lots of problems. Don't do that. So here's something that's kind of a little bit tricky. Uh, occasionally, dormant plants can look like this. But... The only, you know, exception to this being a dormant plant instead of a dying plant is it's got to be at least like 10 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Fahrenheit out in the snow all winter for it to look like this. Um, like I've mentioned, these plants have regularly at nighttime experienced temperatures down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And even 20 degrees Fahrenheit isn't cold enough to kill them all the way back like this plant. So if your plant is dying back like this and it's out in the severe cold, okay, it's dormant. It might grow back in the springtime. Uh, but like I said, that's kind of too cold for me and there's no reason because these are perfectly healthy dormant plants. Uh, at this point, you're just risking killing your plant. Um, in South Carolina, it's not going to get cold enough to do this naturally. So this is more of like a survival situation instead of an optimal dormancy. So in my opinion, you shouldn't really ever let your Venus flytrap get to this point. Uh, you should really aim to have something like this for your dormant plant. Uh, but in this case, uh, this person had it indoors. 
Uh, once again, indoors, if it's 60 degrees, it'll not be nearly cold enough to get that kind of damage. So this is a result from improper watering and not enough sunlight. So not dormant plants. Those are dying plants. Uh, your plant should still look healthy and robust. Give them enough sunlight and artificial light um, until December when it starts getting cold. Keep them around 30 degrees Fahrenheit for three or four months and you'll have successful, dormant, healthy plants. Okay, so hopefully this video answered most of your questions about Venus flytrap dormancy. If you still have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, typically, I do see everything that's written so I can answer it that way. Or if there's some question I haven't thought of, uh, I might do another video about it. But that kind of covers the biggest questions I saw people having about Venus flytrap dormancy. Uh, so uh, I'll be making some more videos uh, soon about carnivorous plants. Kind of do a you know final wrap up with the uh, juniper bonsai and its dormancy. Do some indoor cephalotus type of stuff. Uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, and hit that bell notification to be notified when I post a new video. Uh, so good luck with your Venus flytraps. Hope your dormancy is going well. And I'll see you more in the growing season.